Y'all, I'm on the floor. Crystal Sutherland put her full Souther Lussy into this book and I am loving it. I said I was going to read for 10 hours and that just didn't happen. Jay Kristoff really said, I am going to hurt all of your feelings. Hello, gorgeous angel bestie queens. I hope they're having the most wonderful day of your entire stinking life. This is the first time I've picked up my camera to vlog in probably like two weeks, maybe two and a half weeks. So I'm so excited. We're gonna be doing a 24 hour readathon and my goal is to read some shorter books. So lately I have gone from my reread of House of Earth and Blood to my reread of House of Sky and Breath. And now I am currently listening to the audiobook for Empire of the Vampire. Although I've loved them and I've had a great time with them, I'm just ready to do some like shorter books for this weekend. I'm going to be doing a timed 24 hour readathon. So I will start the timer today. Today's Thursday. I think today we're gonna be doing four hours of reading and then Friday, Saturday will be 10 hours each. So I hope that you're excited friends. If you are, please be sure to give this video a big thumbs up subscribe to my channel, and let's talk about the TBR. The first being The Invocations by Crystal Sutherland. This is the author of House of Hollow, which I read so long ago, it feels like, but remember absolutely loving it. She writes YA horrors that are just so descriptive and her writing style is kind of lyrical, more on the beautiful side, just the way that she describes things, so. The Invocations. This book is about, it sounds like three main characters. We have Zara Jones. She believes in magic because the alternative is just too painful. Her sister was murdered by a serial killer and she hates to feel powerless. So she decides to dabble in the occult to see if there's anything that she can do like for her sister, whether that means like bring her back from the dead or just like communicate with her soul, I'm not sure. And then we have Jude Wolf. She might be the daughter of a billionaire, but she's also undeniably cursed. She made a deal with a demon and now her soul is becoming necrotic. She's just rotting from the inside out and she fears that she's gonna die really soon unless she can find someone to help her. And then our third character is Emmer, Emmer Brine the solution to both Zara and Jude's predicaments. The daughter of a witch, Emmer sells spells to women in desperate situations willing to sacrifice a part of their soul in exchange for a bit of power, a bit of magic to change their lives. But Emmer has a dark past all her own and as her former clients are murdered one by one, she knows it's followed her all the way to London. I have two romanticies. The first is our Who Did This To You book club pick for February that I still haven't picked up yet and it's already February 15th. I have The Ever King by, I think it's LJ Andrews. This is a dark fantasy romance that is giving Pirates of the Caribbean if like Jack Sparrow and Elizabeth got together. I think that's what I've heard. I remember my friend Rachel from Raven Haired Reader read this, absolutely loved it. Everyone in the book club is so excited to read it. I've been seeing people like pop off with the notifications for our book club, but I haven't been looking because I haven't started it yet. So I'm very excited to get to that one. And then the final book on the TBR is Vows and Ruins by Helen Scherer. I read Blood and Steel like a couple months ago at this point. Absolutely loved it. It was another book for our Who Did This To You book club. I need to continue on with this series. I love Thea and Wilder so much. And we got like some big reveals at the end of the first book regarding Thea that I can't wait to see where this goes. And it is time for me to continue because the third book in that series actually just came out very recently. So I need to play some catch up. But I have about 40 minutes to read right now. I'm dying to get into this book. Let's refill our water. Let's put on an ambient room and let's get reading. I'm so excited. check-in so I have been reading for a little less than two hours I'm gonna do the rest of my reading before bed though so I wanted to do an update on thoughts about the invocations so far because I am loving this book so much first of all the prologue of this book 
is so high suspense it really sets the tone for the rest of the book i've been loving getting to know and switching between the three main characters that we have they're also different from each other and yet they have this very weird link to like necromancy obviously witchcraft demons and i just can't wait for them to all like come together and meet but i wanted to read a couple quotes this writing has me gagged i'm obsessed crystal sutherland writes things with a lot of personification and so it just feels this one's from the prologue she forces herself not to run there's no need for desperate measures not yet he's just a man on the towpath at night it would be rude to run and sometimes well, sometimes if you run, the monster chases you. She learned this the hard way. So creepy. She does such a good job of just creating such an overall like mood of creepiness and like the feeling that someone's watching you. Another one, it is impossible. Men cannot use magic. This is what she has been told. This is what she has been promised. Men cannot write spells. Men cannot sear invocations into their skin. Men cannot bind their souls to demons in exchange for power. Once Jude was practically a princess, the spoiled daughter of a very rich man. Now she is a walking nuclear fallout in the form of a girl. Y'all, I'm on the floor. Crystal Sutherland put her full Souther Lussy into this book, and I am loving it. I remember reading House of Hollow. That one I read completely on audiobook, but I remember being so obsessed with the way that she was describing things and the way that you get to know her characters. She always starts off with like, a super interesting and compelling scene and she's done this now for not only our three main characters but we don't know who the character was in the prologue per se so she's done this with four characters in this book in house of hollow i think it was three sisters and like it was the same thing for each of them her introductions to her characters hit so hard obsessed for me with like thrillers and horrors i tend to find that I don't need the characters to be super strong because the mystery and the intrigue and the suspense and some parts just like how grotesque it is that's what keeps me entertained but crystal sutherland has all of that in addition to really interesting and fully flushed out characters So last night, I didn't exactly hit my goal. I was 49 minutes away from reading for four hours. So we do have to make up that time today. So we're gonna be trying to read for 10 hours and 49 minutes. I feel like I've been reading so slowly because it's been so long since I've read a book. I'll say like physically, but even though this is an ebook because I've just been listening to so many audiobooks. but I am 36% of the way into the invocations i'm on chapter 12. i had every intention of waking up early starting reading at like 10 in the morning and now it is 12 27. we're gonna get reading i'm not gonna do another update quite yet because i haven't read too much more but nothing's changed like i'm absolutely loving it i'm loving the characters our girl pallies have like met and they're like coming together and i love the dynamic between them I think that Crystal Sutherland loves writing characters, like female characters in threes, and it just works so well. Last thing I'll say, I promise, I'm not procrastinating on reading, we have to do this. I found my Kindle arm last night, which I'm so happy that it didn't get like lost or just like buried in a box in our move because I was using that last night to read with my page turner. And I haven't used this in so long because I haven't read with my Kindle in such a long time because prior to my audiobook, era during the move i was reading a lot of books physically it is such an elite reading experience like the comfort level is unmatched so that's what we're going to be doing right now officially halfway through i just wanted to give some updates on the like horror elements of this book because i feel like i haven't talked about it too too much there's definitely a lot of 
body horror. I don't mind it. I actually think it's done really, really well, even though there are definitely some descriptions intended to make you uncomfy. Also, just the way that Jude and her curse and how her soul is becoming necrotic and how it impacts the environment around her can be very disturbing and unsettling, like how it impacts her house it makes like dead things flock to her so like that she wakes up and she has like dead animals and dead bugs in her bed and like all of this really gross stuff her whole house is described and i know this is a trigger word for some people is like moist and just uncomfortable and she starts to have the girls like sleep in her house with her and when they all climb into bed they describe it as like squishy Ugh, it's <laughs> so gross but it's done so well and we're starting to get really into the juicy bits now that we're halfway through i'm listening to i think two ambient rooms mainly one is like a witchy rainy ambiance that has a little bit of music and then the other one has been it's for grimdark fantasy and it's mostly ambiance it's not really music but it fits the vibes very well in terms of just like creepiness so i will leave those linked down below if you would like to have a similar reading experience if you're reading any ya horror or thrillers or anything i think that they're pretty good the only other thing i'll say about the invocations right now there's a really good balance between truly creepy scenes and like light-hearted three girlies trying to solve a mystery type scenes so far there haven't been too too many creepy creepy scenes i will update once i've read a larger chunk this time because i know i've been updating about every like 15 to 18 percent so bigger chunk we are now i pause my timer we have 19 hours and 21 minutes left i feel like we're still right at the very beginning of this 24 hour readathon ross and i have today is it's the week of Valentine's Day when I'm filming this, so Ross and I didn't do anything on like Valentine's Day specifically besides like presents and chocolate and stuff like that. Actually, I'm gonna go get chocolate for the for this next reading session. I don't know what I've been doing this whole time. Um, definitely gonna do that, but we have dinner reservations at um, five o'clock, so that will be like my other break. <laughs> besties i have quite a bit to catch you up on i meant to take clips last night from when ross and i went to our like valentine's day dinner but the restaurant was so dark that it just wasn't gonna come out great but we had a great time last night the food was so good and then i did come home and i read but like immediately when we came home i just like took a shower took my makeup off put on some reading sprints finished the invocations I gave it five stars. Can we just talk about that for a second? I went into that book. I'm gonna say like, not with high hopes, but like I did really like House of Hollow, but I was not expecting it to be a five star read. I absolutely loved it. I thought like the pacing was so good. It's kind of medium paced with bursts of really intriguing like moments and the ending is very action packed there's definitely some explosive plot points that happen right at the very end which was so fun and then i was a little bit torn because right at the ending it's not like a super strong ending it kind of just like ends right away but there was an epilogue and i was like mm, i'm not an epilogue person <laughs> like i wish that we didn't do an epilogue but i actually really liked the epilogue as well so i thought it was really well done sorry i'm gonna try to do my mascara while also giving some chit chats which i know is always so awkward because i feel like you make the weirdest faces when you do your mascara and then i started reading the ever king last night and i made it to i think 13 percent, 13 or 15 percent such a strong start i'm so excited it feels like it's been a very long time since i've read a romanticy that hasn't been sarah j mass so i'm very excited for like a new writing style this is my first book that i've ever read by i think the author is lj 
Andrews and immediately I'm really enjoying the writing style. I think it's really fun. It feels, even though it's a fae romanticy, it feels very different in this one because it's about land fae and the sea fae. The sea fae world is very different than what I was expecting. It's not like a little mermaid world. Sea fae are pirates or like they have pirates. To be fair we haven't gotten much exposure but I think it's so interesting that there's like pirates under the sea and I can't wait to see the rest of their society and figure out how all of that works. And then the land fae are a little bit more classic of fae that we've seen in other types of books. So there's like earth fae, night fae, and then I forgot the other one. I think there's three. I read until 2.30. The thing that I'm really debating though is that like before I went to bed, I listened to about 45 minutes, like as I was falling asleep, I was listening to 45 minutes of Empire of the Vampire, but like that's not technically a book on my 24 hour TBR, but I have been kind of listening to it in the background because I, I don't have an audiobook on my like official 24 hour TBR. So I have been listening to it and I'm like, do I count those 45 minutes that I listened to Empire of the Vampire? I am very undecided, but Without counting the Empire of the Vampire time, I have 14 hours and 51 minutes left. I said I was going to read for 10 hours and that just didn't happen. Quick little update because I think I have decided to include my audiobook of Empire of the Vampire. There's a couple things that I want to get done today and it's starting to make me feel like guilty if I'm going to the gym or like I just took JMO for about a 30 minute walk and I was listening to the audiobook the whole time and I was like, I should count this. I figured I would just give like a little update about this book since I will be counting these pages. So this is my first reread, so second time reading, Empire of the Vampire by Jay Kristoff. This is one of my favorite vampire books of literally all time. I love the writing in it and even though I think it was Mel from Melanor Reads who described this book as like some dad monologues. I think that is true. It's like a really interesting perspective from our male character named Gabe. This is like a dystopian fantasy vampire world where vampires in this are truly monsters. Like most of the time when we read a vampire fantasy, they're extremely romanticized and they're usually a love interest and all of these things. In this they're depicted as straight up true monsters. This is like worst case scenario if vampires took over ruling the entire world. It's really creepy. It's gruesome. It's brutal. It's emotional. It's scary at times. Like it is so stinking good. I wanted to reread this because the new book Empire of the Damned is coming out in March, which I'm so excited for. I am 35 percent of the way through the book and I've just been like listening to it when I want to because if I can finish this by just like the end of February which obviously I still have like two weeks um that is my goal so it is quite casual but it's truly just incredible I've been having such a good time with my reread being back with Gabe we have 13 hours 37 minutes left in our readathon we're almost at a halfway point which is really exciting that is the plan I will catch up with y'all in a little bit sleepy after the pool and after the gym. I was laying in the sun for quite a while at the pool and it was so stinking nice. It's been so long since I've been able to do that, but Arizona weather has been so nice. <laughs> a tiny reading check-in. I read about 8% more of Empire of the Vampire because I was listening to it when I was at the gym. So I am now on page 280. I'm just... I know I already said this, but I'm really enjoying my reread of this book. I love the vampires. I love how creepy and dark and like bloody everything is in this book. And then I'm at 24% in the Ever King. This is gonna be my focus from here on out. I said I was gonna read to 50% before I took a break today and then plans change. But I am right now going to make a an ice dirty chai because like I said, we're a little bit sleepy sleeps. We need to push through. I'm also loving that our bedroom gets direct sunlight. So I was just taking some pictures of some pretty books in this pretty sunlight. If I want to put on an ambient room or listen to non-lyrical music. I don't know. I want to try to find something that fits the vibes of the Ever King. Something like 
Pirates of the Caribbean esque. So maybe music. I'm gonna look on Spotify for a playlist. Let's make Dirty Ice Chai and get back to reading. pause because oh my gosh the way that I'm like screaming about this book so I'm 40% of the way through I know I said that my next update was going to be at 50% but I am hanging off of every single word of dialogue between our love interests fighting their attraction for each other not understanding their attraction for each other there's a lot of questions that we haven't had answered yet but Eric aka the ever king is bloodthirsty and cruel but you can tell he has this like kindness in his heart and like this plan for Livia whereas Livia just has no stinking idea what's going on she's really just along for the ride it's very tensiony which I really like there's like angst between them there's definitely a tension that is building but I just can't wait to get to the spicy point. I wish that we've had like some more like tension building scene. I was expecting this to be much more giving Sea of Ruin where it's not as dark quite yet as what I thought it was going to be, I guess. Like yes, there is a captor captive dynamic, but it's giving more of like the Pirate King's daughter than it is giving sea of ruin if those references make sense to anybody the magic in this book especially with the sea fae magic is so cool their magic manifests through their voice and i think that is so fitting you think of sirens with their siren songs that like draw people in and just puts them in a trance and like brings them to their death and then pirates as well have such like shanties or like haunting melodies that they sing and it just fits so cool and so nicely and I think I thought that was a really wonderful touch think of our octopus man in Pirates of the Caribbean Davy Jones his ship how it was able to like breach the sea and come above the sea but then also dive underneath the sea and travel that way that is this ship of the ever king but i feel like those scenes where that's happening in certain battles is a little bit difficult to picture exactly what's going on so like that's been a little bit i think of a a writing challenge like some of the scenes just aren't really as clearly described as what i would want them to be but you get the vibes you know you get like the overall gist of it hanging off of every single word of our love interests but it's getting a little bit repetitive to the point where i'm like okay let's like get to the next step according to my kindle i have five hours and ten minutes left in this book so once we finish this we will see how far we can get into vows and ruins which I'm so stinking excited for. Okay. Team break. Good morning, friends. We officially have four hours and 19 minutes left in this readathon. My goal is to finish this readathon today, um, but some updates from last night. So I made it to 60% in the Ever King. I think I did start to struggle with this last night when I was reading it. I think I kind of hit a wall with this. It just started to get so repetitive in the dialogue. It's like we're constantly still talking about them liking each other, feeling this pull towards each other, but like then they hate each other. Y'all, we get it. <laughs> we did get a really fun, spicy scene though. The tension with them afterwards has been really good. It didn't just go from disliking each other, being annoyed with each other, but attracted to each other, spicy scene, to now we're obsessed with each other. They're still very 
standoffish with all of their feelings. So I'm not mad at it. I just like couldn't do the repetitiveness of the dialogue anymore. And last night I did switch to listening to Empire of the Vampire and then on sprints this morning this was definitely my focus. I've actually read about 30, 30 more percent of this which I'm really happy about. Um, so I am now on page 424, officially more than halfway through which is very exciting. And this has just been so, oh my gosh heartbreaking the battle scenes that happen in the middle of this book they're so epic that you're like how is the story not ending with this climactic of a plot point but i still have like 300 pages left i remember thinking the same exact thing my first read through it but this time around it's going a little bit better it's not as emotionally tumultuous because i know what happens even though Oh my gosh, from the halfway point of the battles that I just experienced to the end, it is so traumatic. Jay Kristoff really said, I'm going to hurt all of your feelings and then I'm gonna make you wait years for the next book in the series. With four, a little over four hours left, my Kindle estimates that I have a little bit over three hours left in The Ever King. I would like to finish this today and then I'll probably just finish out the remainder of the time listening to Empire of the Vampire, which I'm definitely not going to finish this in the 24 hour readathon, but I'm very happy with the progress that I've made. Hello besties, we are here to close out this 24 hour readathon, go over how many pages I read and final thoughts. So we finished two books, we finished The Invocations, we finished The Ever King. I also read 312 pages of this chunker, so we read this middle piece during the 24 hour readathon. Total pages read 1,024. Having the audiobook for this I think really helped me through this 24 hour readathon because the Ever King was a bit of a disappointment. So I did finish it. I ended up giving it 2.5 stars, which is really sad. I think it's the lowest rated who did this to book club pick I've had since the beginning of our book club last August. I think my last update with that book to y'all was around the 60% mark. And then I just read the rest of it. And I'm not gonna lie, I really struggled through it the writing was pretty good like it started off really strong however the repetition just really really wore me down it was like our two main characters Livia and King Eric I loved what they were saying to each other in the beginning I love the dialogue between them to the first like 40 percent but they just say the same exact thing to each other over and over and over again like through the entire middle of the book i felt like the pacing was really off as well the characters were doing nothing to drive the story forward to me it got really annoying to me livia really faded as a main character i found that these side characters were the stars of the show i loved celine and learning her backstory i loved i don't know how you say his name so well I absolutely loved him so stinking much. I think at the end of the day, like the romance just really didn't do it for me. There were things that I did really like about it. I liked the lore or like the folk tales that they had in each of their cultures that really came out throughout the story. I thought that that was really fun. I did also really like the sea shanties and the magic of the sea fey folk. We had such a mix of books. This by the way, Empire of the Vampire is going to be another five star read for me. I gave it five stars the first time. It is so strong in terms of writing and plot and characters and dialogue and just everything about this I love so much. The Invocations as well. So we had two really strong reads and one not so strong, but I hope that you enjoyed watching friends. If you did, please be sure to give this video a big thumbs up, subscribe to my channel. Let me know down below if you would want to be captured by a Captain Jack Sparrow-esque type character. I will catch you in the comments and I will see you in my next one friends. Bye!